Hey friends, welcome to the pilot episode of What You're Craving. Um, I'm so excited. Uh, I'm also like a little bit nervous to be doing a solo episode. I transparently am a little nervous to be doing an episode at all. Um, I am so like honored to get to be with you. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, I'm just so psyched that um, that what you're craving is getting a getting a life of its own, and I'm I'm just thrilled about all of it, to be honest with you. And um, so I want to just introduce myself, tell you what I'm about, tell you what I I think this podcast is going to be about, and see where this conversation goes with me and me and you. So um, just a little update if you didn't know, but I am a therapist and, um, and I've been a therapist for over 20 years, uh, which is weird because I usually just feel about 23. So time really enjoy the time if you have it. And I have been an addictions and eating disorders therapist for that long. And um, I, this is a path that I like, I skip to work every single day. Like, I love what I do. It's so my passion. And I have been blessed in how it's all unfolded and how it's on all unfolding. Um, and I, I have, you know, a bunch of degrees and a bunch of certifications and a bunch of trainings, which I'm sure you'll learn with me. Like, I kind of, I don't actually know how I finish any of the schooling that I did, but here we are. Um, but more importantly, um, I think is that I come to this work really honestly, because I come to this work because as I struggled in the first 27 to 30 years of my life, I was walking around like almost looking for myself. Um, and I mean that in two ways, right? First of all, I, I was so lost as a person, like my soul was so lost and I was seeking solution and help in every corner and just couldn't find it. And that happened from a very early age. Um, I, you know, uh, I believe that, you know, sometimes when you, when it comes to addictions and eating disorders, of which I have many, uh, you come to it naturally through biology, you come to it through trauma, you come through it through emotional, um, like, be, I'm, I, I would always say about myself, like I, I sunburn emotionally very easily. Like I'm, I'm very, just very highly emotional. And <laughs> that used to, I used to be very ashamed of that. And I'm very proud of that today. And so all of the vulnerability factors that one could have for eating disorders and addictions, I come with all of them. And so, um, and I, I, and the trauma I experienced was I started at the age of three when my father died very traumatically and um, he drove off a cliff. And I, I tell you the story because I hope that we get to talk a lot about like belief and spirituality and things that I, in my years of getting well and seeking have really come to mean a lot to me and, and really come to heal me in ways I didn't know possible. But losing my dad so early and, and having that loss and having some of the other stuff that was going on around really made me really started like an emptiness inside of me that I started to fill uh, when I, by the time I was four years old, I started to fill with food and I started to fill with fantasy and I started to fill with lying and I started to fill with all of these things. And so by the time I was seven years old, you know, I was hiding food and hoarding food and stealing food. And it was already my relationship with food had gone, gone amok. You know, it, it was a thing. It was a thing. And my mom took me to a nutritionist, which I actually think that I love my mother. I mean, that woman was so outmatched with a little girl like me, let me tell you. And what ended up happening, I was, I was seven years old, seven years old, sitting in this nutrition's office being like, She's like telling me like, you know, eat a handful of peanuts. And I was like, I can't stop eating. Like, what are you talking about? And that's because for me, the eating disorder was deeply rooted in emotion and it was deeply rooted in spirituality. And it was like, it was a comprehensive problem that, um, that the sweet nutritionist who was also doing her best was trying to heal me with like 
food. Like, and it was so much deeper for me, you know, and, and as it goes with the name of this podcast, like I was craving something that was much deeper than food and, um, you know, progressions of illnesses are fast and furious sometimes. And for me, that's absolutely the case. And I was rocking and rolling in my eating disorder. And so I was, I just want to say on a side note, when I was 13 years old, um, I went to weight loss camp, which I have to say was like so much fun. I had like the best boyfriend and we we're having the best time. But again, they were just teaching me about like food and they were hardly teaching me about food. They were like feeding me and running me. And so of course I was like losing all this weight. It was amazing. I was a little chunkster. And I have to say like, I never, ever, ever felt like I fit in. I never, ever, ever felt like I had the rule book to life. I felt like I was always hustling. Like I was always just like a little bit less than everybody else. And and frankly, the um, the environment served that. Like my, when after my father died, my mother moved me to the suburbs of New York City, where everybody had like two parents and sisters and brothers, and like I was just like this fat kid with like this afro, you know, and just trying to hustle my way through life. And I just I never ever felt enough, and I never ever felt like I belonged. Uh, and it was awful. And I used food to soothe me in that way, on on and on and on and on. And, um, and so it, you know, it progressed and it progressed. And while I was at weight loss camp, finally feeling like, like I belonged, um, I also had this knowing that I, it, I wasn't being healed. I was just having fun. And I knew I was going to go back to my life and gain all my weight back. And this is the diet drama and trauma at its finest. Like my diet drama and trauma started at seven years old. I was on the hunt. I was on the, you know, go on the diet, diet fails you, you know, gain the weight, hate yourself, think it's you, which, you know, please know it's never you. It's always the diet. We're going to talk so much about diet culture on the show. Oh my God. I think it is literally the most toxic thing we have going right now. If you're in it, like if you're involved in diet culture, I am going to do my best to get you out <laughs> like now, like 10 minutes ago, because it is so toxic and is so deeply, deeply hindering your greatness. And I am here to help you find your greatness among other things. So game on. But anyway, you know, and I, and let me tell you something in ninth grade, I was in home ec class and like my, the jeans that it could finally fit me from the gap. Cause I'd never fit in normal clothes. And I remember standing in home ec class and that like button went off my pants and the story just goes on and on and on like that, except for that. It gets really gnarly. It gets gnarly. Like I ballooned up to 325 pounds where I stopped wearing underwear and I, you know, would wear flip-flops because I couldn't bend down and tie my shoes. And I, and I didn't know, th like I stopped fitting in the shower and I was in such deep denial and I was just trying like diets and I was trying this and I was trying, it was just so awful and so terrible I was trying to go to intuitive eating nutritionists that were telling me like, just, you know, what are you feeding? And, and like, and I think there's some value to what they were saying. I was just so deeply addicted to food at the time that I couldn't hear what anybody was saying until I stopped being addicted to food. And this really amazing thing was happening while I was in all of this entrenched, entrenched awfulness which is when I was 13 years old at that weight loss camp, I had my first download. I call these things downloads. Like when I get a little like message from above, it's a download, like this knowing. I hope you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, I hope in the time that we're together, you start to access this. It's the coolest thing in the world. And while we can start being really open, you can start to really hear some great stuff. So I had my first download. And my first download when I was 13 years old, knowing I was not getting the help that I needed, the first download I ever got in my life was this. Molly, you need to help people. You need to find and create programs that help people with what you're struggling with right now. Now, little did I know, hashtag wounded healer, that that was going to mean that I was going to have to go through such deep suffering and such like awfulness, including but not limited to going on every single diet that existed in the world, having it fail me, obviously getting into deep morbid obesity, being chronically suicidal all of the time, right? Just having no 
cope in this world, doing really destructive things to my body, right? Having to overcome addictions to alcohol and other drugs, like so many things, so many things. Um, And what I want to tell you, maybe most importantly, is there's not a minute of my entire life of that gnarly path that I have walked that I regret for a minute. Because what it's allowed for me to do is like be real. You know what I mean? Like real. Like when I'm sitting with people and they're suffering, A, I'm cool with it. Like I get it. Like I've been in the depths of hell. Like I've been in the depths of hell and like we're going to get out of the depths of hell. Now you may not be in the depths of hell. So you may be like, hey, like simmer down. But I think the same can be said. It's like I just get it and I get what it is to suffer and I get what it is to thrive And I've seen a lot of stuff. And so it's like, I just think that helping people when you've seen a lot of stuff is like easier. And it's also like my calling. It's also like, I know exactly what I want to do in this world, which is just help people to, you know, be their best selves. And so I wrote a book um, in 20. 19 and it was published in December of 2019 called breaking up a sugar. And so the end of my eating disorder journey, which is, you know, every single thing that you could possibly do in the entire world to try to negotiate your weight, right. Including like eating through bariatric surgery, including going to every ashram in the world, like including all of it. And what I recognized is that until I could figure out what you know, sort of the allergy of food that I had, which was with sugar and flour, which is my story, may not be your story, but I do think there's a place where we have to figure out our relationship with food, whatever that is. But after I figured that out, which I did, and I, you know, opened a clinic and I have a beautiful uh, clinic in New York City where we help people to over, to really heal their relationship with food, however that looks for them. It is the most beautiful work. Like I literally cannot believe that I get to do this work with people. And after the book was published, um, people really loved what I was saying. It was really interesting for me because I had been a therapist for so long. And so I didn't really understand how you shift from being like a therapist to like talking on Facebook and talking on Instagram and talking on podcasts, but I learned pretty quickly. I got it. I got the gig pretty quickly through some, with the help, with help, with help, which we're going to talk a lot about because I don't think any of us do this alone. And I think the opposite of addiction is connection. And I think being connected, which is one of the things I really, really hope we get to that we get to do together is really feel connected together. One of the things I'm really striving for on this podcast is bringing on people who tell the truth, who are going to feed our souls with their truth and feed our souls with their knowledge and feed our souls with their clarity and just help us to see the world a different way. Because I know for me, when I was really in the darkness, the, the like serpents in my soul were like, just telling me the worst things, like just the worst things, like you're nothing you're unlovable. You're never going to be anything. No one's ever going to love you. You're too much on and on and on and on and on. And so I broke up with sugar and it was like a game changer, but it was the first step. Right. And, and what I, and so in the midst of all of this, um, I was asked to start this podcast um, after being on a podcast, after being on a podcast, I was, I guess, and I was sort of shocked. Like they were like, do you want to start a podcast? And I thought, I guess I do. Um, and, And the reason I do is because I don't take like nods from the universe lightly, you know, and maybe one day I'll do a podcast about how this book was published when I had like 10 Instagram followers and like no following, no nothing, because really the way that my book was published was like, like a Tetris board. It was just like, it felt to me like it was so aligned. And so did this podcast, to be honest with you. It just felt like such an alignment. It felt like a, like a straight yes, even though it was nothing I had planned to do, which I think when you open your eyes to the world, in my experience, like I think when you open your eyes to the world, there's a lot we're missing. 
And I really hope this podcast, you know, helps us to do that. But when I was trying to think about what I wanted the podcast to be about, you know, the first thought everybody was like, well, is it going to be about eating disorders? And is it going to be about food? And is it going to be about breaking up with sugar? And it's like, I have to tell you, I was so, I don't even think I understood until I was really in the middle of my healing. Like when I really decided to surrender to breaking up with sugar is when the work really began, to be honest. Like breaking up with sugar was like the entree, like the entryway to me understanding who I wanted to be in this world, who I could be in this world, and to start to do the work to connect to like the deepest part of me. And I want us to all figure that out. Like, and so I've, I've since then been on this beautiful journey of seeking and knowing and, and listen, I mean, if you want to know why you're binging on sugar all the time, if you want to know why you're body shaming all the time, if you want to know why you're drinking too much, if you want to know why you're shopping too much, if you want to know why you can't get off Instagram, do the, do it and you'll figure it out, right? Stop eating sugar and you'll figure out, you know, what's really happening inside of you. And that's what I did. And so like that second year of giving up sugar, I was like, oh my God, I have a really bad alcohol problem. And I had to go and, and heal that, which was amazing. And then after I did that, I was like, wow, I, I really hate myself. And I, I gosh, I remember it so well, you guys, like I remember sitting in this therapist's office when I had given up sugar, given up alcohol, and I was like trying to convince this therapist. Can you imagine? I'm I'm this therapist sitting in this therapist's office, and I'm like just trying to convince him. I'm like, listen, I am so unlovable. Like I can't even explain it to you. I'm like, I hate myself. I'm unlovable. Nobody loves me. And he looked at me, and he was like you have a spirituality problem. Like you have a belief problem. Like that's a, he said, that's a river of trash you're drinking out of. And, you know, we need to figure this out together. And I'm so type A, you know, I was like, well, how long does that take? Like, what are we, what are we, what are we calling that? Like six weeks, seven weeks? He's like, no, no, no. (laughs) That's like a lifetime. And I was like, oh, but you know, the lifetime's been beautiful. I want to say that. I want to say that. And I also want to say like, I lived such a fraudulent life for so long. You know, can you imagine being like an eating disorders and addictions therapist, being actively eating disordered and actively addicted? It's a really hard way to live. And it was so hard and it was so miserable. And it's like, I didn't know what was on the other side of all of that fear. And I didn't know what was on the other side of like that chokehold that addiction had me in. It was awful. And this breaking open that I, I don't know where I found that bravery because I really hated myself and I really didn't think that I was worth it. And I don't know where I found the strength. You know, I really am a big believer in grace. I'm a big believer in like every now and then we just kind of get handed this willingness and this grace. And I, so I'm always like a fan of like, jump on it, jump on it, jump on it if you have it. And what I ended up doing was really seeking like, deep paths of truth. Now this sounds like a little, like, no, this is not like a movie like Siddhartha or something like that. Don't worry. I'm more like a people's mat, people magazine, spirituality kind of person. I want to make it like easy and tangible for all of us. Yes. I'm trained in shamanism. I'm trained in Reiki. I'm trained in like Tibetan healing bowls. I'm trained in a lot of things. Um, but the reason I'm trained in that is just because I, I'm such a, I've become such a seeker and I, I think it's, I don't think like, I know the answer is not in the food plan. You guys, like the answer is not even in the, like stopping using drugs. That's the gateway to get us into who we're really supposed to be in this world. That's what I've realized in all of this. Like it's all about the food, but it's not about the food at all. And so in these years that I've been an eating disorders therapist, it's like, we're talking about the food and we're talking about the food. And finally I'm like, okay, you know what to eat and you know what to not eat. Like we got to dig deeper because that's where 
true freedom is. And that's where like your best self is. And that's where love is. And that's where inspiration and creativity and like all the things, right? Like all the things that truly matter are. And so I've been like seeking and seeking and seeking and seeking. And I guess like as I'm sitting here, like so gratefully getting gifted being in an audience with you, I also have this, you know, when they asked me, when I, when I wrote Breaking Up With Sugar, they said, you know, who are you going to dedicate the book to? And it was like such a no brainer. The first person that I dedicated the book to was the reader because I've been there. It's like, I can't even believe that somebody would pick up another diet book. Do you know what I mean? And I know it's, it's a diet book in its presentation, but it's not a diet book in its read. It's a relationship book in its read because there's only two relationships that you need to be in, in this whole world. Am I right? And here are the two relationships. And this is what we're really going to be talking about on what you're craving, which has got to be in a relationship with food because you have to eat and you have to be in a relationship with yourself because you got to, you know, wake up in the morning and hang out with yourself. And I dedicated the book to the reader because I can't believe the resiliency of the human spirit. Like, I think it's amazing. I think every time we try again, it's just the most beautiful thing in the world. And, you know, we really wreck this relationship with ourselves when we are in a really unhealthy relationship with food. And like, of course, right. It's like making promises at 10 AM, you know, I swear I'm not going to do it today. And then like 1130 or like hands in the donut pile with all addictions, right? Even like with an Instagram addiction, like, okay, I'm going to take it off my, you know, I'm going to take it off my, my phone. And then you're like, wait, let me reload it. Right. Or even in relationships, I swear I'm never going to call them again. And then you're calling and restoring a relationship of trust and love with yourself is a thing. It's a thing and it's doable, but so is self-forgiveness. And so is curiosity. Like there's just so much that we want to be talking about here and that we want to be learning about here. And one of them is really about healing. But the thing I need to say, like most of all, like believe you me, sometimes when I'm feeling out of sorts in this world, I'm like, wait, should I go on this cleanse? <laughs> like, it's great. Like, whatever. I mean, I always know like that's not the answer, but it is always my first, like sort of, I don't, I don't take my first response so seriously because I know it's not always like the healthiest part of me, like making this, this go for it. But I do know that the answer isn't in macros. The answer isn't in more exercise. Like the answer isn't in like, the answer is hardly even in another self-help book, right? The answer is, is deeper and it's about, you know, what do I really need in this moment? And so the beauty of what's happened for me is in battling like these demons, like, whew, I've been able to learn a lot. And I don't think I'm that special in this way. Like, of course, I think I'm really special. I, I think that the, the gift of loving yourself, and I think the gift of healing, and I think the gift of open-mindedness, and I think the gift of seeking is the right of everybody. And here's how I think we do it. I think like the truth is the most beautiful healer in the whole world. I know for me, one of the ways I've really healed is within spiritual communities of people who have like the same stuff as me. And I remember when I was really struggling with my food, I would go into these rooms and people would say things like, I couldn't believe. They would be like, yeah, I ate the food out of the garbage. And I'm like, I ate the food out of the garbage. I can't believe they're just saying that out loud. Like it's no big deal. And then I would, and this is what I would, I would literally sit down in those rooms and just hysterically cry. But I, I realized today, like those tears, like that was like toxins coming out of me. I, I cried the drop of a hat, by the way, I cried the drop of a hat. And this idea of like, just listening to truth, truth. I, like, I have to tell you something when somebody's like, when I say to somebody, how are you? And they're like, I'm great. And I know that they're not great. It's just so like, you know, like when I say to somebody, it's so like, ugh, to me, like, can you just tell me what's wrong? Like, I want to hear that. Like, that's my soul needs the truth. Like 
truth is my like soul's lifeblood and the truest of the truth. Like I call it like the dirty truth, <laughs> like dirty truth heals me in a way that I can't even explain. And this is like what my friends would say about me. Like, and you know, I want you to know this about me because I'm hoping that we're about to engage in this like very long-term relationship where you're going to like tell me what you want to hear more about. And you're going to like tell me what you think of what we're talking about. But like surface conversations just leave me like so drained in this world. Like I just like to talk about like the real stuff. I like to like take my heart like out of my chest, put it down on the table. And I want like the person I'm talking to to do the same. And I like want to talk about like the real stuff. And that's what we're going to be talking about here. Okay. Now that doesn't mean it's not like hilariously funny. That doesn't mean that we're not going to be like puking with laughter, but my goodness, life is short. And it's important for us to be like, in relationship with each other. And I think that this is a big part of it. Like I know for me, when I was deeply in my addictions, my life felt like the size of a postage stamp. Like I couldn't relate to anybody. I couldn't think of anybody but myself and my problems. And it was like, I hated myself so much. And I was like, all I could think about and the healthier I've gotten and the more I've seeked and the more I've known, it's like, I've just recognized that like being connected to other people and learning their truth and learning new ideas and, and being really open-minded to new ways of thinking. Like when I was sitting in that therapist's office telling him how unlovable I was, like I didn't realize like that was just a belief I had. And I say that really importantly, like because a belief is something, is a thought that we've repeated over and over and over again. And listen, like I'm a pretty, I'm a very spiritual person. You'll learn this about me. Like I pray, I meditate, I do crystals. I love moons, you know, and I'm a scientist on top of it. You know, I'm a, you know, a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. But what I've learned, I think it's because I never knew, like I was deeply entrenched in the most evil of belief systems about myself and about this world. And I never knew that, that you could change them, that you could shift them, that you could start a practice and start an action of believing something new. Like it was the greatest thing ever happened to me as was learning about self-forgiveness. Like I hated myself so much and I had some work I had to do to like learn how to forgive myself. I had to learn how to forgive others. Like it's been a trip, you know, it's been a trip and it's all been through brave action. So you know, I've sat in like these eating disorder, you know, I sat in these eating disorders things and everyone's talking about like, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. Like, I think it's very hard to love yourself when you're doing really hateful things to yourself. Like, I think it's really, really hard to love your body when you're doing really harmful things to your body. I believe so deeply that we all have this deep inner wisdom inside and it's kind of like our job to access it. And that's kind of just to circle back to like the downloads of life. And I need to tell you, most of all, I believe almost everything is reparable. I believe that we can have the life that we want. I believe that, like we can heal, we can overcome, we just can't do it alone. And we just can't do it without information and hope and direction. And, you know, one of my, there's this Chinese proverb and it says, you know, fall down seven times, get up eight. And I believe in that so much, especially with food and weight stuff. Like, yeah, maybe not on the first time, but I think this idea of committing to self-love as an act and committing to healing as an act is like the greatest act of self-love alive. Like, it's just so beautiful. And, and in my time of, of being a therapist and, 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 and creating a platform and being in these groups with, you know, thousands of people that have, you know, been, reading Breaking Up With Sugar and sort of starting to listen to me. It's like I, I'm watching them change and them grow and them connect and them learn and them shift their beliefs. And this is what I hope we can do together. The other thing I want to say is like, I believe wholeheartedly in the, um, it's like in my company and one of our core values is like evolve or die. And so if there's a better idea, I'm always willing to shift to it. It's part of the new me, like the me that I've evolved into there's not a minute in my life I hate myself. And if you would have told me 15 years ago that I'd be saying this, I'd be like, you're a dirty liar. Like you're a dirty liar. And so I really believe that change and hope and growth is so possible as this healing, as this forgiveness. And so 
I'm going to bring people on this show who I think are going to teach us and tell us something that's going to shift us. So that may be like my therapist friends who I think are so smart and can help us really get to the bottom of what we're craving. And that may be just people who I think stories are so interesting and inspirational that listening to how they got there can awaken and, and ignite our souls to have us feeling differently or feeling open or feeling connected. I mean, I'm trying to manifest having like people I'm obsessed with be on this show. So if you want to get on board with my manifestation process, like shoot me an email or something. And like, yeah, I'm like all on board with us all manifesting. Like we really want to get Brene Brown on. I'm obsessed with her. She's my best friend and she doesn't know it. And, you know, I just think we're gonna have a great time. And I want to say like, I love you. I love everybody who's in my community. And I'm like much more interested in what you have to say about things and how we can create this movement together. Because I think once we can figure out what we're really craving and we can really know ourselves in this new light, like anything is possible. And I say that in two ways, which means that you can feel, you know, a sense of whole and a sense of hope most of the time. I mean, I wake up like a lunatic, but you know, that's another story for another time. But then I sort of work, work my big way into hope, hopeful and whole. But I also think it's really good for the world because the world needs more people like that, right? The world needs us whole and open and ready and, and you know, full hearts, you know? And uh, so that's what we're going to do together. And I'm so excited. Um, I'm so excited to know you. I'm so excited for you to know me. I'm so excited for us to learn and grow and heal and figure out what we're really craving. So I'll see you next week. Bye, loves. <laughs>